Hello. Welcome to A Layman Looks at the Word with Hal Richardson. We're continuing on faith words and science fact. This is lesson four in the series. We've seen how God spoke and it was done. He's the one that made everything that we know. And we've also seen how our words make such a difference because we can speak and have those things done as well as we follow in the faith of God. Last time we left off, when Jesus was called by the Lord to John the Baptist, his cousin, to be baptized in the Jordan River. Now Satan had looked for Jesus since the time of the very beginning when God said that he would send the seed of the woman to bruise his head, but he had never found him. But when Jesus was baptized by John in the river, he came up out of the water and the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. By this wonderful statement of love for his only begotten son, the father made it clear that Jesus was ready and that he was very proud of him for what he had done and on this statement, Jesus was ready to go into the wilderness and be tempted by the devil for 40 days. On the strength of this approval, Jesus kept his faith strong. Now these temptations were real. The Bible says he was in all ways tempted like unto us in Hebrews 4.15. But with every temptation, Jesus answered the devil by scripture, with his mouth, with his words with the sword of the Spirit, as Paul says in Ephesians 6. In Matthew 4.2, And when he had fasted forty days and nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city, and setteth him in the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see, Satan knows scripture, and he will try to quote it to you or tell you that you're understanding it wrong. But the thing is, he'll always pervert it. And this time he said, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. That's not in Psalms 91, which is the Psalms he was trying to quote. Again in Matthew 4, 8. Again the devil taketh him up unto an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus to him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. In the same fashion that God's words gave Jesus approval and confidence, your words of encouragement and love will help you to give your children a strong foundation in their lives. It will also help your world in every aspect, with your family, with your friends, with your job. We are to use scripture for our confessions and for our battles. God's word is true and will cause the things askew of it to conform. Confess promises and thank God for your answer. For at the atomic level, things follow 
what you say. As the angels ministered to Jesus here, God gives you a guardian angel to watch over you. We see that in Matthew 18. And that angel will protect you and work for you. But he can't if you speak wrong. In Ecclesiastes in 5 verse 6, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry with thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? If you speak negative things towards your life, the angel says, I don't know why he's saying that, but I'll honor what he's saying. Careful what you say before your angel. The quantum realm is different. In the quantum realm, things can act surreal to what we know about the world around us. When a conductor is cooled near absolute zero, which is in Kelvin minus 459 Fahrenheit, it has no resistance and it becomes a superconductor. This defies Ohm's law which concerns the movement of electrons through a conductor, written as E equals I times R, which is voltage, equals current times resistance. When liquid helium is cooled to near absolute zero, it will flow up the sides and out of its container, which is superfluidity, and this defies our understanding of gravity. Einstein's theory of relativity shows that time and space is affected by gravity, which is not a force, but mass and energy that curves the space-time continuum. His theory of special relativity is in the absence of gravity. Just as it's difficult for us to understand things in the quantum realm that don't seem to go along with what we know and understand with our everyday lives, it will seem that the world won't recognize your positive faith in the words that you speak and the talk that goes along with that life. But they can't help but notice the difference in your life and the difference in your circumstances as you continue to walk in faith. As you believe. Jesus said to a man that asked him to heal his servant, As you have believed, so be it done unto you, in Matthew 8.13. Six years ago, there was a violent desert storm that came across the airport where I parked my little airplane. Now, I learned years ago that storms will heed your words in Jesus' name. Some of the promises are found in Deuteronomy 28. I pray when a storm approaches that no blasting or winds or hail or lightning will harm my family or my vehicles or my dwelling. You can take this as far as your faith. Well, I saw on the news that many planes were damaged on the ramp, which is where I park, which is outside on asphalt and chained down. I thank God for his protection and I went to go see the carnage. There were at least 30 planes damaged, some flipped upside down and totaled. Several of the damaged planes were around my plane, which by the way, was not harmed. Jesus promised us, for those who believe, they will do greater things than he did. But I believe that this is not greater in deed, but in number. For today in the world, there's about 3 billion Christians. 
John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Your faith and belief confessions affect those who are around you. From the things that Jesus did to what I have seen, I believe that your words cause changes at the atomic level. You need to speak what God's word says. Confess his promises in your life. Watch your mouth and speak things that are good. Bless and edify. Remember that Jesus said that your faith can move mountains. That's going to conclude our lesson for today. Remember this, that Jesus is our King and our High Priest. And in heaven, He intercedes for us every day. He has given us His Word so we can place it in our hearts and speak good things and cause our world to be a better place around us. If you don't know him today as your Lord and Savior, ask him into your life. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time and we'll conclude Faith Words and Science Facts. Bye for now.